Welcome back to the show. Interesting new study, Lewis, suggests that swearing is actually a pretty effective painkiller. And I'm referring, of course, to cursing, profanity, the seven dirty words. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to the study, researchers from UK's Keele University asked participants for five words they'd like to use after hitting their thumb with a hammer. And the first word they listed would be kind of like their go-to profanity during the experiment. They were also asked to list five boring words, so like words they'd use to describe uh, a table, for example. And the participants were then told to submerge their unclenched hand in a container of 41 degree water and keep it there while cursing for as long as they could. Before and after putting their hands into the water, their heart rate was recorded. And after they could no longer stand the cold temperature, they were asked to rate the amount of pain they were in also. And people withstood a moderate to strongly painful stimulus for longer if they were repeating a swear word instead of a non-swear word, according to the team, which was led by psychologist Richard Stevens. And what's your reaction to this? Is this, is this logical to you? I mean, as a guy who likes to swear a lot uh, outside of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really have to hold back while I'm doing the show. It's tough. Yeah. But uh, this is weird. I mean, on one hand, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, on the other hand, I think, why do people automatically swear when they stub their toe? Right. I have no idea. So you actually don't think it makes sense that people that swearing would dull pain for people? Well, it's obviously all mental. I mean, there, there's no way that uttering a word would have some physical effect no, without it, it, a mental component. It alters so, the perception right, of the pain. Right. From the way participants' heart rates accelerated post-swearing, the psychologists believed that their fight-or-flight response had been activated. That may be because cursing can amp up feelings of aggression. Interestingly, women reported feeling less pain after swearing. Uh, in other words, the difference was more significant with women than with men. So, so women women's pain perception was dulled more by swearing than men's. I wonder what that says. You know, I think I think this study could have been done on something more worthwhile. Oh, here we go again, <laughs> Lewis. See, here's the thing. If you don't do the study, then people will claim that there's no credible evidence about it. Let them claim that there's no credible <laughs> evidence that swearing causes less pain. On a serious note, though, we hear so much about Christian groups want Obama to address indecency and expletives on television. And wouldn't the effect, in other words, there's something about swear words that must be affecting the effect they have on pain perception because they are swear words, right? And if you suddenly eliminate that list of seven dirty words, all of a sudden, if they aren't swear words, maybe it wouldn't have the, the, the pain dulling effect. So in other words... So we should keep them as... We should keep these seven dirty words. What if, what if the seven dirty, what if broadcast indecency regulations go out the window the way that I think they should really. And then all of a sudden, because they are no longer words you aren't supposed to say, they don't have the pain dulling effect. Then we'll just have to rely on the pharmaceuticals. <laughs> <laughs> right. There but would, you, there would be new words. There would be new words that would come up. We'll make new words. Yeah. Right, but in other words, if the if if those seven I'm not saying specifically those seven words just if if any words are allowed on television because people aren't going to their lives won't be ruined if they hear a swear word mm -hmm. if we if we ever become adult enough to realize that those words have meaning because they're big. that's what I'm saying a lot of the meaning of that's what I'm that's my point exactly which is that the the effect the pain dulling effect must be coming from the fact that people are saying words that you're not supposed to say yes the the stigma of saying it yeah if and if you give the word you know by not saying it you give the word power and if if it's you're allowed to say it uh the power goes out the window the word is meaningless and no pain dulling uh, effect no pain dulling effect and we'll just have to take percocets no uh oh, right right of course 